David Packard Medal of Innovation in 2010, which sort of speaks a lot to his uh, vision and entrepreneur capabilities. But I want to bring up Chair C Chairman, CEO, and founder of Salesforce.com, Mark Benioff. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to San Francisco. Uh, we have some beautiful weather here for you this week that you're going to enjoy. It's fabulous. And uh, I'm also extremely excited uh, this week, and for those of you who were at Woodstock, uh, it's because uh, Neil Young won his first Grammy Award for music last night. Pretty awesome. So, a few Neil Young fans out there. Uh, before I begin my presentation, I do want to let you know Salesforce.com is now a publicly traded uh, company. So we are um, on the, uh, that's not working, let's try this one. Uh, that one's not working either. How about the next slide? Ah, there we go, that always works, okay. Um, Salesforce.com is a publicly traded company, and uh, my presentation today is governed by the Safe Harbor Statement, and if you don't have time to read it, you can also find it on our website. For the last 12 years, after I quit my job at Oracle, I started this company, Salesforce.com, and the reason why I started the company was very, very simple. Uh, I really believe that uh, there was a huge shift that was going on in our industry, and it's a huge shift that's uh, representative of the tremendous amount of technology, the tremendous amount of innovation that's happening in our industry today. Personally, I don't know how you are, I've never been busier, I've never been more excited about what's going on in our industry. The changes that are going on in our industry are really spectacular. I'm spending more time trying to understand what startups are doing than ever before. Uh, even once a month, I'm part of a small group of uh, young CEOs, and I appreciated that because they include me because they, you know, uh, they thought I was young until they met me. Um, but it helps me remember when back when I used to have hair. And w what I've learned from these very young entrepreneurs is our industry, its best days are still ahead of it. And the amount of change, the amount of transformation that is coming in our industry is dramatic. But what I've been doing for the last 12 years is evangelizing cloud computing, moving off of kind of on-premise systems and into systems that are in the internet to manage businesses. And this has been the fundamental shift that I've made. And in the same way that I've moved from mainframes to client-server computing and client-server to enterprise like so many people in the room and now into, into the cloud, really I'm able to say, wow, it's amazing what's possible. Now, Salesforce.com today is the global enterprise standard for cloud computing. Uh, we'll do approximately $2 billion in enterprise revenue. Uh, we're one of the 10 largest independent software companies in the world today. And it's really because we've been entirely focused on this concept of cloud computing, using multi-tenant architectures, using shared systems to deliver the next generation of capability for enterprises. Now, what I love about my industry and what I have been doing since I was started programming in the industry in 1979 is just a huge amount of change. And I'm sure, how many people here started on mainframes, MVS, CICS? Okay, so, you know, and then we heard the joke about moving on to DEX, VAX, and VMS systems, and into client-server computing, and then into the desktop, and now into this kind of mobile internet tsunami. And it's the amount of change, the amount of growth, the amount of evolution in our industry is spectacular. It, it's amazing. And it's continuing, and it's going faster, and it's, 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 it's truly accelerating. And as we look at that against kind of the... Uh, backdrop of security itself, we move into an increasingly complex and difficult and severe security environment. Uh, we've seen so many complex security issues, but more than ever just in the past few years. And we're going to address some of that today. I've also brought as part of my presentation Salesforce.com's chief trust officer who deals with part of that. Because when we look out and when we see the changing in technology and changing computing environment, we're always thinking about how is security going to impact that environment. That security and, and innovation are tightly linked, and uh, we have to keep both in mind, otherwise we're not going to be able to deliver our promise of enterprise cloud computing. Now about last year when this RSA conference took place, something amazing happened in our industry. Social networking users passed email users. That was spectacular. 
How many people here have an account on Facebook? How many on Twitter? So you know what I'm talking about already. It, it has really gripped us and has shown us a whole different way to communicate and share information. But now as Salesforce.com gets out and is hiring from universities and, and, and really bringing the next generation of users into our own company, what we find is a lot of those users, they don't use these traditional email systems. They don't use the traditional tools. They're not looking for the green screens and blue screens to be productive. They're looking for the very environments that they have been productive with in the environments, sometimes many times of universities and in other times just in their personal lives. There's a, this broad change that is going on in the internet. It, it's another really good example is this slide right here. Look at what people are doing on the internet. It's changing. It's, the old internet is dying off. And a new internet is emerging, a next generation of applications. You know, Facebook and Twitter, video sites, taking up uh, really the majority of our time on the internet itself. Here's another way to look at it. This is the co recent ComScore ratings, and you can really see this dramatic shift that's been occurring over the last two years. But it's not just what people are doing on the internet that's changing, it's how they're doing it on the internet that's changing as well. You know, I, I, I don't really use a mouse anymore. I don't really use a wired keyboard anymore. I, I've moved on to, like a lot of you in the room, well, let me ask, how many people here have iPads? Yeah. How many people have a mobile phone with them, like an iPhone or an Android phone? The, the very technology that we're using to access the internet, how we're doing it, has dramatically changed. And we're going to see that dramatically change even further. Even just last week, we saw a major financial analyst drop their PC uh, shipment numbers for the year by two points. And what we are waiting for is the next, the next iPad, the next Android device. We're moving into the year of the tablet. And again, next year, the year of the tablet. And next year, the year of the tablet. Just as we were for many years waiting for the year of the land and the year of the land and the year of the land, we're moving into one of the most exciting new technology opportunities of our time. Because this combination of what we're doing on the internet and how we're doing it on the internet is creating a fundamental change in what I do every day, which is cloud computing. When I started Salesforce.com, the fundamental focus was on fast, on low cost, and on easy. And that's really what we've been working on now for 12 years. Now, I realize a lot of companies in our industry, when I talk about cloud one, they still think that they're on cloud zero. You know, they have, they're still running all their technology on premise. But for our 100,000 customers, they're moving from cloud one into cloud two. And cloud two for them is about these next generation of mobile systems, next generation of technology that is social, and next generation of open platforms. And away from the kind of traditional user interfaces and traditional proprietary systems that we've built many of our IT data centers on. And they are borrowing from these consumer systems. It's called the consumerization of IT. But a better way to say it is, I like Facebook a lot more than I like our enterprise IT apps. The way I think about it at Salesforce is very simple. When I started Salesforce.com in 1999, I asked myself a simple question. I was at Oracle, down the road in Redwood City, at the top of the Oracle Towers, looking out over the Oracle campus, watching all the Oracle people, looking at the Oracle Lake, the Oracle Fountains. And I said to myself, while I was using the internet, why are we writing all this new enterprise software as if the internet does not exist? Or really what I said was, why isn't all enterprise software like Amazon.com? It was so easy to use. You know, I was able to kind of get going on a major complex app with no installation, with no upgrades, with no updates. I could just get going. But today, I'm not asking myself that question anymore. The question that I'm asking myself, and I think the question a lot of you are asking, is why is an all-enterprise software like Facebook? That level of productivity, that level of collaboration, that level of communication, our industry has changed. We've seen this very young you know, uh, individual drop out of Harvard, and now in his mid-20s deliver one of the best paradigms ever for collaboration far better than even what we had with Lotus Notes or, or, or with Microsoft SharePoint. In fact, there's no comparison because the level of collaboration and communication that's happening is spectacular. 
We have to ask, why isn't all enterprise software like Facebook? When I see a shift this big, I think a door has opened, a door that we all have to walk through to embrace for our users' empowerment. Yes, it used to be like Amazon.com. It used to have this nice tab-based interface, and we were pulling the technology out of the internet as we needed it, using our mice, sitting at our desks, you know, at our, and, and our location was not known. There was no kind of geographic awareness, and we were using primarily our Windows or Macintosh, and, and when we wanted new software, well, we used to have these things called disks, and we would install them, you know? We'd self-integrate. We'd have to do, put the software in to get it going. But today, that's not the way it is. Today, the world is about Facebook. It's about a feed-based interface. It's about push technology. It's about touching these computers, and it's about smartphones and tablets, and it's about new operating systems and new programming languages like Android or iOS or Java or Ruby on Rails or building mission-critical apps in Python or PHP. And it's not about self-integrating your apps. It's about using marketplaces. This is what I call the Facebook imperative. I've written about this on TechCrunch and on other sites over the last year because I feel very strongly that this is something that we all have to really grab and understand. And that's why at Salesforce we've really been focused on moving to what we call Cloud 2. And in our view of Cloud 2 and in our view of the architecture of Cloud 2, it's building on a robust database environment, but a database environment that's in the cloud. And that's why we're working on delivering to our customers this next generation of databases called database.com. On top of that, we have our force.com application development and deployment environment, which is built including Heroku, which is a Ruby on Rails technology that we recently acquired. And then on top of that application development deployment environment, we've built, using these tools, our sales applications, our customer service applications. We've even built over a thousand apps with our partners in our app exchange, which is, is Salesforce.com's app store. And we have a new app built natively on our platform from BMC called Remedy Force for help desk IT. But all of that is wrapped with a social layer so that it doesn't look like the traditional software, but it looks and acts and it talks exactly like Facebook or Twitter. And that's the power of it. Now, we're at a security conference, and while I want to go into more details on what our technology does, I think what would be really interesting for you is to hear how we look at the security environment against this reflection of change. So will you please welcome Jim Cavallari, our Chief Trust Officer. Jim, please welcome to the stage. <laughs> 